All right, in this video, I want to talk about how to calculate photons. Um, photons using wavelength uh, and, and energy in joules. So I have a, pro, uh, a formula here uh, that we're going to use to do this. And some you know, professors may give this to you, some may not. It's probably a good one to know. It's not too bad, though. But energy for photon equals Planck's constant, which is represented by an H times the speed of light over the wavelength. <clears throat> okay. Uh, and key thing to remember here is this is per photon. This is going to give you an answer in a per photon manner. It's going to give us uh, joules per photon um, by doing this. Okay. So basically what this uh, question is asking us is if we, if if they give us 609 kilojoules of energy, how many photons is that going uh, to contain? And this is the formula we're going <clears> to <throat> kind of use with some dimensional analysis to get to the answer. So let's go ahead and get started, okay? Um, let's just plug in our, our values here. Grab a different color, maybe yellow this time. All right, so, um, oh, and let me, before I do that, let me go ahead and give you um, Planck's constant. A lot of uh, professors will give this to you also. Um, again, it's not terribly hard to get to. 626 uh, times 10 negative 34. So, I mean, you do 10, 15 problems with them, and I mean, you've just about got it anyway. So, uh, if your professor really is a stickler and wants you to remember just every, you know, nitty-gritty thing in chemistry, um, you know, it, it doesn't take much, so it's not the end of the world, I don't think. <clears throat> anyway, uh, so let's get started in with the problem here. So we've got uh, E equals uh, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 times <clears throat> speed of light. Now, in my last video, I talked about uh, converting the speed of light from uh, meters per second to nanometers per second. This is another great indication where it saves you a step uh, on doing this. So um, that's going to be 8 and 9, so that's 17 times 10 to the 17th nanometers per second. And the units for, uh, for this, I forgot to include them in there, it's very important, are joules second. So joules second. Now that's going to be important when canceling out. Okay, over over your wavelengths, which is 589 nanometers. <clears throat> All right. So, once we've got this in here, it's just kind of a plug and chug uh, deal. Let me pull up the calculator here bring this down so you can see it. All right, clear this off. We've got 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 times the speed of light in nanometers, 10 to the 17 equals divided by what is it, 589 equals. So that gives us 3.374 times 10 to the 19. So let's go, let's write that right here, equals 3.374, that's a 4, not a 9, times 10 to the negative 19. 19 what, right? So nanometers here are going to cancel out. Seconds are going to cancel out. We're going to be left with joules per photon. Sorry, I'm scrunching over with space. So that's an important concept, joules per photon. I said that up here also. So that, uh, that ratio, 3.74, can be written just the same as one photon. I can write one photon for every 3.374 times 10 to the negative 19 
times 10 to the negative 19 uh, joules. So both these things, both this here and this over here, mean the same thing. So now we have our joules per photon. If we start, started right now, we would be able to tell you how many photons are in one joule of energy, but the question wants, wants to know if they give us 609 uh, kilojoules of energy. How many photons are in that? So now it's just a simple conversion process, and it may not be so simple for some, but we'll go ahead and simplify it now. Um, so we're going to use this conversion process uh, with our kilojoules. So it gives us 609 kilojoules. We're just going to simply convert that to joules, because that's what our conversion ratio is here. We know that for every one kilojoule, there are 1,000 joules. And then once we do this, we can add in our conversion factor. So I know that for every 3.374 uh, times 10 to the negative 19 joules, I have one photon. Right? So that's going to give me blank photons in 609 kilojoules. So we'll just call this blank photons. Now let's make sure our units cancel out. Joules is going to cancel out here. Kilojoules is going to cancel out here. I'm going to be left with photons, which is what they wanted. How many photons are contained? So this is just plug and chug again with our calculator. Let me go ahead and or I'll pull it up here so you can see it a little bit better. <clears throat> All right, so we've got 609 kilojoules times 1,000 kilojoules divided by 1 times 1 photon divided by 3.74 uh, times 10 to the negative... 19. That's going to equal 1.628. Uh, that doesn't really seem right. I wonder if I did something wrong here. 609 times 1000 divided by 3.374. Times 10 to the negative 19. Yeah, I must have done something wrong. Okay, um, so this looks more right. Um, 1.8049.8049 times 10, what was that? 10 to the 24. Let's just do it one more time just to be safe and make sure that that is the right answer. I'm fairly confident it is, but 609 times 1,000 divided by 3.374 times 10 to negative 19. Yeah, okay. So, sorry, this is a new calculator. I'm still getting used to it. Um, all right, so we've got 1.8049 times 10 to the 24 uh, photons, which is our answer. Uh, three significant figures, three significant figures. So this needs to be in three significant figures. Um, so you would really, depending on your calculator, you would round this to 1.80 to 1.81 times 10 to the 24. Um, you know, this calculator did not didn't round that to a five. Um, a lot of them would. Um, if you were following uh, significant figures throughout the entire problem, you would have rounded this to uh, this to three and this to three and so on and so forth, and it would have been one probably would have been one point eight one times ten to the twenty four photons. Uh, you know, either way, this this should get you uh, get you right. Um, one point eight zero. Uh, 
times 10 to the 24 or 1.81 times 10 to the 24 um, photons. Both should be acceptable answers um, if it's an essay type question or if it's a multiple choice. You know, if it has 1.81, choose 1.81. If it has 1.80, choose 1.80. Uh, anyway, I hope that wasn't uh, too confusing, and thanks for watching.